Welcome everybody here. Today is an exciting day in the camp. We have Journey Level member Mark Carlson in the house and he will be sharing his capstone project. Mark, please take it away. We're excited to learn what you've been up to. Tell us Great. about your capstone. Thanks, Wendy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, Wendy, you'll give me a quick verbal confirmation. You're seeing what I'm seeing. I am. Thank you. Great. Okay. So I've been with camp uh, as we were just talking for a couple of years now, and I was considering a couple different journey level projects, but this Mead presentation um, kind of has surfaced up and I've taught the class a couple of years in a row now, and I'm excited to kind of give a quick background about it and all of the materials that were associated with the class are going to be available as part of this packet for a uh, submission to the uh, the master capstone program and i have just kind of a quick overview on the screen right now of some of the other uh, uh, associated programs and projects i've been working on and i'll go through them in a little bit more detail but i'm just going to kind of keep on breezing right through this will all be documented in a PDF report that I'm also kind of considering as part of a packet of the submission. So here we go. Um, way back at the beginning, I was doing work on ants and uh, membracids in Colorado. That's where my research kind of started as a Cornell undergraduate. And it was a good introduction to field research, but also a good opportunity to be doing a little bit of outreach. I was working with their uh, their science nature camp. And I did that for a couple years and still really have fond memories of Rocky Mountain Biological Lab in Colorado and Cornell. I served in the Peace Corps in El Salvador and I was part of the agroforestry and environmental education uh, program. And I was recruited as a, as a beekeeper not, and no one else in the program had any beekeeping uh, experience. And so I was working with bees as soon as I arrived. I really enjoyed it. And Peace Corps was a lot of fun. Uh, I came back to the US. Uh, actually, I was in Arizona for a while. I got a master's degree and then Ethiopia for a while and then in, landed back in San Francisco and I started teaching a, a, a beekeeping class as part of a Round Rock Honey, um, which was the name of the organization. So I was working there for a couple of years and really fun to think about. Um, it was right in the heart of the city and I enjoyed that a lot too. And that was kind of all laying the found work. Oh, here I'll also mention too, I was, I have been employed at the same company for the last 10 years. And that's a small R&D laboratory in the Bayview part of San Francisco where my work isn't on honeybees, but actually on bacterial disinfection. And so that gets a little bit of extra attention in my project um, with the Mead class. And that work is ongoing. I really like my job here down in San Francisco. That, so all this kind of leads up to, actually I'll briefly review this as well. Um, I've been part of the Beekeeping Association in San Francisco for a while, and it has involved different classes that I've taught, uh, managing different yards, um, some interesting projects, the way that San Francisco should be recognized as having really unique uh, cultural events and uh, exhibits, for example. I was working with the De Young Museum and still work with that uh, program on a really interesting art exhibit. And I've been, been a member of the board, the San Francisco Beekeeping Association board for the last two years. I have been doing volunteer work with uh, Mount Tamapias Bee Lab. And that's an interesting benchmark in some of my work recently because it is more associated with uh, native bees than with, um, with honey bees. And I've been thinking a lot more about that interface and how to really I see it as a really unique opportunity to kind of weave these different programs and disciplines together. Um, I don't see them hopefully as in conflict with each other, but more as just a unique opportunity to kind of try and thread the needle by which the native bee community, which is also uh, prolific and, and lots of good research going on in San Francisco with the urban beekeeping crowd. Um, and so on the bottom of my screen here, I do have a handful of different native bees that I'd been able to identify in my neighborhood. And I'm working with not only the National Park Conservancy, but also the uh, Bumblebee Atlas. I've been sampling for them a little bit too. And I should also mention, I am interested in raising uh, bumblebees. Again, not as a tangent to the work with the mead, which I wanna get to, um, 
I am interested in native bees. I am interested in uh, monitoring. I'm also interested, interested in raising bumblebees. My work in San Francisco has involved a, a community garden where I do manage the bees there. And uh, I am getting a little bit more into um, how urban beekeeping and urban beekeeping advocacy is a valuable, uh, I've got a valuable opportunity in front of me whether or not I want to embrace it. And I'm thinking about that a little bit more. And I'll get to that a little bit more as I go forward. But this is a new program for me. And we've got a lot of wind in the sail. Also catch a lot of swarms. We manage the hives there. I was earlier this year employed by um, the the USDA ARS lab in Davis, and I was a, just a, a science technician um, collecting field data, uh, doing a little bit of laboratory work. And it was a really excellent exposure to um, the role of pollination services. Again, being in San Francisco and thinking about beekeeping, a lot of my uh, colleagues are interested in honey production, but none of my colleagues, very few of my colleagues are interested in pollination services. And so, again, I see these cultural, these beekeeping interfaces as um, really uh, bee interfaces as an opportunity, not necessarily in conflict, but hopefully as one that we can continue to look as how they can get along well with each other. And so the work in Davis was with all pollination service hives, and I really enjoyed it. I really like almond, and I appreciate that the role that both UC Davis and the, the uh, ARS lab are, are the role, the problems that they're tackling. I think they're not uh, insubstantial and I think they're really valuable and I'm really excited to follow up on how those are, are working going forward. Uh, a little bit of backlog and this is mostly for Alina because I haven't had a chance to talk with her about it yet, but earlier this year I was looking at some of the other forage data and it was really fascinating to think about how when we're looking at pollination hives, their nutritional balance can be supplemented and one ways in which the, some experimental uh, efforts have done, have executed in back in 2017 was to, and 2018 was to provide supplementary uh, uh, forage resources. And from the preliminary review of that data, which I was working on and working closely with the uh, colleagues in that lab, we did observe that there were some initial interesting conclusions, some interesting results that might be associated with the colonies having slightly larger, um, larger colonies as as measured by the number of bees that we are counting in the hive, and also um, based on the weight that was being used. There were some uh, scales that were deployed to measure the weight of those hives, and so interesting foreshadowing on potential work that we might be looking at uh, writing up in the near future. 2022 data analysis. This was also affiliated with the USDA ARS lab. Same story here that if we do a simple experimental design that has all of the bees in the experiment were pollination service hives, so they all had access to almond. Some of them were given supplementary resources that involved uh, both, um, in this case it was uh, sunflower, and so how were supplementary resources useful for those colonies, and we not only did see some potential interesting similar patterns in the size of those colonies, but um, as I mentioned here, there were some increases in the amount of pollen. Um, they're really fascinating too when you look not just at the short-term impacts of these supplementary resources, but in the long-term supplementary resources, we did see that the there was a larger colonies measured by frame of bees, but then also a, low, a reduction in mites, which we could talk about that going forward. But in general, I just wanted to touch on it as work that I had done earlier this year and work that we might be continuing to do a little bit in the future in 2024. Part of my assignment at the time was also to measure or to monitor some of the um, forage that was available. And that was using both just looking at the plants that were in those areas, using a little bit of landscape, uh, landscape analysis tools, and then also not collecting pollen, but being aware of pollen and considering how the collection of pollen could be useful for this type of experiment. Now, sorry about all of that. I wanted to just very quickly give a background on some of the honeybee work and uh, the geographic areas that I've been both in uh, San Francisco and in Davis, and then getting this project 
uh, presented to you all today is mostly about the culinary aspects of honey. And so I've been working with honey and uh, and with mead for the last couple of years and specifically with honey judging. I've been uh, either leading or contributing to a live or virtual uh, honey judging event here in San Francisco for uh, over the last, uh, let's see, the last eight years and so uh, seven years. And so how that is a really fun project. It's really helped me grow a lot in my appreciation of honey. And I'm going to be doing it again in 2024. It's kind of evolved into now I'm also leading some other honey tasting events. And um, they've become really fun and also uh, traditions now that I'm spending more time with different groups and I'm leading these honey, uh, honey and mead tasting activities. And I think of them as affiliated with the background for this project because of the uh, connection that it has with the 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 BEEs and uh, CEs of the California Master Beekeeping, the outreach expectations of the California Master Beekeeping program. And so I've really seen my opportunities grow and they all have culminated again in, in how I'm contributing to the California Master Beekeeping program, uh, a quick kind of overview of some of the things that I've been working with. But again, most specifically, um, how it relates to the culinary aspects of honey. And that said, I've been working with Amina Harris and the Honey and Pollination Center for the last handful of years, mostly as a student taking the classes, both the mead classes and also working with Amina at the Honey Festival and really celebrating that. If I could just highlight that the role that I've had in the, the Honey and Pollination Center has been very minor up till now, but it's been a really uh, valuable um, uh, opportunity for me to learn a lot, not only about um, honey and mead production, but um, also the organizations that allow for some of these advanced education opportunities. So big fan, big promoter of the Honey and Pollination Center. And I'm going to slow down a little bit now and kind of spend a little bit more time describing uh, some of the background of the assignment. And that was that when I initially talked to both uh, uh, Kareen of out of LA and Wendy, we were thinking of how this mead class could be complementary. And Amina was in on these conversations in its early inception, um, how a California master beekeeping class would be complementary to a really well established curriculum that she had already been working on and established for uh, uh, the last, you know, five to 10 years as well. And so the idea was that if I could present an introduction to her 101 class, and not just her 101 class, but I was trying to also capture some of my appreciation and my experiences with the Honey and Pollination Center with honey tasting. And so could I present, develop and present a mead appreciation class that would involve some of my particular skill sets and experiences, background with honey, uh, honey tasting, quality control of honey, which is an interesting aside, how that relates to my work here in the lab of, uh, of uh, how some of these analytic laboratory analytical tools can be complementary to our sensory analysis. And so I mixed all that together as uh, hopefully as an understandable package that then I put together three different years of a mead class and presented them. And uh, they're all video recorded and I'll be providing the slides from those presentations as well. And so how I can describe them in one quick summary class, I'd say uh, each course that I've taught for the last three years has had a professional mead maker that co-hosted the class with me and they presented their, uh, their mead at the end of the class. And so I would give a, a lecture that would summarize some of my experiences and understanding of what honey, honey analysis, mead, mead making, and then hand it off to a professional mead maker to not only describe a product that they were particularly fond of, but also to allow for them to, to in indulge a little bit more in their technical experience with brewing. And so those pieces have come together a little bit more each year and it's been a lot of fun and I've really enjoyed each class and I'm really glad for that invitation. And so how I consider this a capstone defense, I'm looking forward to working myself toward that uh, uh, that accomplishment of being a, achieving the master beekeeping certificate um, as a result of these previous three master beaker, uh, these three previous mead classes, 
but then also how that's continuing to grow. And so I'm working with a, Cali a San Francisco Mead Guild. I have taught the Mead class for my San Francisco Beekeeping Association. And in 2022, I actually presented this class for um, the Humboldt uh, Beekeeping Association as well. And so that was a lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of tailwind, a lot of momentum, a lot of positive reviews. And I think I'll get to that really quickly that there have been areas for improvement that are uh, valuable to not only address, but also to, um, yeah, to highlight as ways by which this class is all meant to be iterative and how it, it was always meant to be uh, feedback and, and a growing process. And so um, there is interest in some of the most recent reviews that we wanna have more um, nuts and bolts understanding of how to make mead. And so I corrected the title so it didn't say mead making, but also we're considering how a potential another mead making course could be a complementary component to this uh, early effort of just mead appreciation. And then how presenters can ramble and stray off topic. That's again, valuable feedback on how the audience can have a more enjoyable experience. And already we've talked, I've talked, spoke with Wendy about ways by which we can uh, I can work more with the invited guest presenters and also be more diligent about ways to keep these virtual experiences as valuable to the audience as possible, which should be an uh, easy objective that um, I'm certainly well aware of and want to continue to to emphasize, especially as we will likely have more virtual things in the future. So what's next for 2024? Uh, a lot of the projects that I mentioned kind of in rapid succession at the beginning of this are actually projects that will be continued in 2024. And that includes this honey competition. Um, things are really good with that organization. I just, I'll be going to a big holiday dinner with the San Francisco Beekeeping Association tomorrow. Uh, I'm really in the middle of that program and development of other new programs to come in the coming year. I didn't have a chance to really mention much of this, but I have been working very closely with another California master beekeeper whose name is Lindsay Wilson. She's a professional veterinarian, and uh, I've been working with her as a quasi mentor and she's a mentee. And so it's been an interesting opportunity to kind of develop how that relationship would work. But it's also been really productive. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we both have really contributed to each other's interests, and I think that's very viable for the upcoming year. Specifically, she is working with me uh, on some of this uh, advocacy efforts um, associated with a potential generation of a, Calif a San Francisco Farm Bureau. And that's been a lot of fun and it's been really great to have her, her as, a, as a colleague. Um, I mentioned uh, other camp project development, uh, mostly just the run of the mill, wanting to keep myself as an active member. I will be doing this retreat again with the Return Peace Corps volunteers the native bee collection with Mount Tam. I am interested in doing a little work in my neighborhood as well. I'm writing with a USDA ARS uh, bee scientist named Chris Mayak, and I think that'll go into the early uh, months of the year. Uh, I am still interested in pollen, pollen monitoring, but not so much professionally, more as uh, an interest that I'll be doing in my neighborhood. Bumblebee rearing, um, and then I leave these last two bullets is probably where I'd like to kind of wrap things up that I am interested in seeing what happens with the Honey and Pollination Center. And then I'm also really open to your suggestions. So that said, I'm going to take myself so I can see you guys again. And I'll be welcoming any feedback or questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Could you press stop sharing? Thank you. You bet. Yeah, awesome. Uh, thank you for that very concise overview of all of the various hives, you know, as use of a metaphor that you've been diving into over the past uh, seven to eight years. We really appreciate it. Thank you for your service to science-based beekeeping and honeybee health and in mentoring others and really um, seeing and putting, connecting all the dots, like you said, um, and, and fostering a, a community that is, is unified based on um, the sweetness and, and beauty of all things honey. Yeah, well done, thank you. Uh, it make it easy, Wendy. I have enjoyed working with you and this program. And so it's, 
it's it doesn't feel like work if I can use that as an easy metaphor. And that's the key is any project capstone that we invite folks to engage in at the at the master level, that capstone project has to be fueled by joy. And it's evident that that's been your jam here. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I, yeah I could just share a little bit about my experience. Because I was, at least this year, I helped Mark as a facilitator to uh, run the course and Mark, I really appreciated how you combine storytelling and also you were able to incorporate a lot of scientific information in regards to disinfection while still presenting it in a way that a uh, lay person can understand, but also those who are more um, scientifically inclined or like research papers, you gave them all these hooks they can use to go and do further research. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned, the storytelling was was very helpful as well. So. I just Thanks, want to yeah. say it's a great class you put together. It's a great addition to the curriculum that um, it can be used as a template as well. So it really is a service project that you did that will be able to last far in the future. Those, those slides are, are great. So awesome. on behalf of the team at the California <laughs> Master Beekeeper Program, Mark, we hereby honor you with your Master Capstone certification. Thank you so much. Cheers.